If you're looking to upgrade your subwoofer, you need to put the Monoprice Monolith 12 inch THX certified subwoofer on your short list. And we're gonna check it out right after the jump. First things first, I wanna thank Monoprice for sending this subwoofer over for review. So thank you guys so much for that. Now this 12 inch ported subwoofer comes in at just under $900 with 500 watts RMS. Now I put a link in the description to Monoprice's full lineup of THX certified subwoofers ranging from $500 all the way up to $1,350. Now this thing is about 125 pounds in the box so I would roll it up on its side and open the box from the bottom. First thing I notice is a nice grill and it looks like we also get a pair of port plugs as well. Here's a pro tip for those that have carpet, I would remove the feet as you can move the subwoofer around a lot better, sliding it on your carpet once the feet are removed. Now on the front, we get the 12 inch woofer and two ports below. On the back, we have crossover, phase and level knobs, along with three switches, an LED light and a service port off to the side. At the bottom, we have two RCA inputs, one XLR input, and an XLR output, which acts as a pass-through for daisy chaining your subwoofers. Power port and power switch on the right to round out what's on the back. For proper setup with an AVR that is not THX, you will need to put the crossover switch down, which is THX off, keep the EQ switch to extended, and I leave power switch to auto. As for size, I placed it next to a 15-inch Martin Logan subwoofer, where it definitely looks smaller from the front. However, if we look at another angle, we can see the Monoprice subwoofer is a lot larger. I placed the sub on my decoupling device and connected it with RCA and power. I like how you can see the Monoprice logo through the grill. I think that's pretty cool and it's a nice touch. All right, now I know what you're probably gonna ask me. Technodad, how does it sound and what speakers did you have running with it? Well, this setup is pretty much all Martin Logan, the ESL-X, the ESL-C center channel and the Motion 4 eyes for surrounds. I do have four SVS Prime Elevation speakers, and with this subwoofer, that will complete a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos setup. Everything is being run by a Denon AVR X6500H, and when I ran Odyssey and started watching movies, I was actually not that impressed. Now, initially, I thought that because I'm used to the SVS PB4000, and my living room space is over 4,000 cubic feet, and it opens up to a kitchen and stairwell, so, there's a lot of air to be moved, and I, I didn't think this 12-inch subwoofer was up to the task until I went to the level knob and pretty much jacked it up to plus 5 dB, somewhere around there, and that's where it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's where that subwoofer needs to live, at least in my room. Everything was awesome after that. So initially, you know, I was doing the Odyssey like subwoofer level matching and you know, it had me turn it down quite a bit below zero just so that it could run everything. And even though I turned it up quite a bit watching TV, movies and you know, music especially, this subwoofer started to shine once I just made that little adjustment. But first, I was a little kind of like, hey man, this is supposed to be pretty good subwoofer, but I don't know what's going on. And that was the issue. It just wasn't turned up enough. So sometimes, you know, room correction, you know, doesn't get it right 100%, you gotta go in there and like tweak, you know, a few things, turn some knobs, you know, flip some switches. Now I did mention the SVS PV4000 because I was really loving that subwoofer until I heard this one when I realized that it's half the price, not putting out as much power, meaning it's a 500 watt RMS amplifier. And I think the PV4000 is 1200 watts RMS. I don't know, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong but it's probably double. Now, the one thing I noticed since I don't have like measuring equipment to measure any of this stuff, there's a scene in A Quiet Place and well, a few scenes that would, with the PB4000, like rattle the wine glasses in the kitchen. The wine glasses are hanging like upside down in our kitchen or whatever. And it would shake those things. Now, after I turned up the uh, Monoprice sub uh, to where I have it now, I'm still getting that same amount of shake from those wine glasses in that same scene. So I know it's not really a scientific comparison, but for half the price, this thing is putting out probably around the same amount of performance. And we're talking about subsonic frequencies, stuff I can't really hear, you know, stuff that's really just shaking the house. 
right? That's pretty much uh, what we're talking about, anything under 20 hertz. I then put on the race lean from Ready Player One and was thoroughly impressed. Again, when the T-Rex slams his feet down or when the, you know, King Kong is like bouncing around, smashing into stuff, that's when the subwoofer was really, really, really working out. And I have to say, with, you know, regular TV watching and movies, the subwoofer was balanced, even though I jacked up the volume. It was balanced with the rest of the system. Now, normally when I'm doing a two-channel listening situation, I don't like to have a subwoofer. I like the tower speakers to kind of just be on their own and do their thing. However, integrating this monolith 12-inch subwoofer was actually a treat. I liked the amount of bass I got on it, and I was loving life to the point where I was playing Call of Duty and I just went through my demo tracks like over and over. So if you don't know what that is, I have a playlist of my demo tracks and I just added DJ Magic Mike's Do You Like Bass 2. You guys definitely need to check that out if you want a good bass demo for your subwoofers or your speakers or whatever. Uh, links to Tidal and Spotify playlists are down in the description. But pretty much it's like a four, three hours and 47 minute or something like that uh, playlist. And I went through that like three or four times while I was playing Call of Duty, not in the same day, obviously not in the same day, but it was awesome. Like I would just wanted to sit there and listen to music and it was great. And I love those songs and they're great tracks. So definitely check those out. Put it into sealed mode and I didn't really like the sound that I was getting. Imported, we still get nice, tight, punchy bass, you know? Like I would keep this imported for a nice well-rounded subwoofer for like music, movies, and TV. So the biggest things I didn't like about the subwoofer were the size and weight. And I'm not sure if I wanna keep something that large in the living room. However, if this is going to a man cave or a dedicated home theater, I think this is a great option, especially for those that don't wanna spend more than $1,000 and get some great performance. You might have to tweak it a little bit, but you can get some stellar performance out of the subwoofer. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of the bigger name brand subwoofers and spending two grand, just think you could get two of these for that same price and maybe have better performance in your theater room. Just some food for thought, something for you guys to think about. I like the subwoofer, too bad it's gotta go back. I threw my back out like a week ago and um, trying to you know, put this back in the box and get it down the stairs and you know, get it to the shipper is going to be a big pain in the butt. Again, I wanna thank Mono Price for sending the subwoofer over for review. Thank you guys so much. And if you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below or hit me up on social or email, whatever you like to use. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D, I'm your techno dad and I'll see you next time. Thank you